My name is Linda O'Connell. My business is Learnology. And we specialize in helping leaders become more effective and like their jobs more. And my question is, I'm not really out to promote me as an individual, but I'm really trying to promote my brand and my company. So as far as social media is concerned, how do I show my heart and soul as a business as opposed to my personal brand? One thing that you could focus on to begin with is to make people aware, again, building your brand, as Kenny talks about, the personal brand by talking about the mission, as well as what it is that you want to, the people who you service to accomplish. And by keying in on that, and then having people talk about what it is that they were going through before they actually came and pick up the phone to call you or engage with their services, as well as the results that they experienced afterwards, those are the things that would help others to be able to see that, okay, someone can help me when I'm in this situation. The personal stories of people that we've helped. Case studies, yes. So you may not have a desire to build your personal brand as much, but as, as mentioned, people are going to trust you. They're going to believe in you, a person. You have connections and contacts. When you leverage those, you can pull them into your brand. If it's coming from a company, it's going to sound like it's coming from a company. If it's coming from your true passion, that's priceless. Best companies today, the best brands, have a really strong personality. It doesn't have to be boring and serious. It can be fun and irreverent. It can be um, lighthearted. But have a personality. Define that personality for your brand and make sure that all the people that are spreading the word, just like they've said, are using their own voice, but they're consistent with the personality of your brand. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on up. Hi, I'm Quincy Jackson. Hi, Quincy. Hi. Uh, my, my questions are pretty simple. Um, it's a two-part question. The first is, uh, what are some of the biggest disadvantages you see for people not being on social media? And the other one, it's another simple question, is what do you see as some of the biggest advantages of being on social media? The biggest disadvantage of not being on social media, social media is a necessary evil. A lot of people find it difficult to quantify results from it, but the biggest disadvantage is your competitors are there and they're building their audience and they're sharing and liking and commenting on things that, um, again, your peers are doing and not you. Whereas you could be there and spreading your own influence, um, establishing yourself as an authority. It's better for people to find out about the value that you bring to the table through you, the things, the tips, the secrets of the trade that you uh, provide before um, someone else does it because they can say, oh, I heard about this from Quincy. If you are on social media and you're just posting posts, you're missing the whole part of being social. Yes. You have the ability to connect with anybody else in the world. Preach. It could be influencers, it could be celebrities, it could be strategic decision makers. When you build your personal brain, you elevate yourself on a different level. You can connect with those people, you can ask for things, you can let people know who you are, what you're about. Pull that, take advantage of those connections. Take advantage of being able to contact anyone throughout the world. That's, that's the bigger piece of social media. People are just doing it wrong. You can't just put posts online and expect people to magically know what you're doing or care about it. Don't post and pray. Engage. Engage. Get engaged with people. <laughs> I'm Christy Alexander. I own um, a company called Apple Rose Beauty. It's so an organic skincare company that supports the fight against human trafficking. So we employ survivors and donate to organizations that rescue and rehabilitate them. And um, I've fallen into the trap of spending a lot of money on Facebook ads and trying to reach an audience. And I just wanted to hear your ideas on some tools that I can use to really um, drill into the audience. I look at my my sales. I do a lot of email marketing, so I look at my sales and stats from that. So I kind of have a feel for the customers that are interested in my product and like it. Um, and then I do a lot of Facebook looking at um, audiences and stuff like that, but there seems to be a disconnect because I don't get a lot of... Who are you looking to attract? Who are your buyers? Um, generally, middle-aged professional women, so 20, you know, 25 to 60, and usually... Um, That's a big range. Who are your yeah. best buyers, though? Once you, you My best buyers are within the 30-year-old range, and they 
Okay. So immediately now by cutting down your age range from 30 to 39, you've probably eliminated half of the population uh, based on who you're targeting. Then you want to look at different factors within the power editor. If you're, for those of you familiar with Facebook and using um, the advertising portion, you'll definitely uh, want to start identifying what your audience looks like, um, their behaviors, what they purchase, right? So what are some of the other things that they may have purchased? You can factor that in as well. Are they homeowners? Do they have kids? How old are those kids? You know, what kind of car do they drive? And you can start to exclude things as well and not just include things. And by doing that, by even surveying your customers and identifying what your best customers look like, you can build a profile around those individuals and target them specifically. I think where he's, um, that was an excellent point. And it also, once you narrow it down, it, it can be that you have a very um, specific message just to those people. So if you're targeting a large demographic with your ads with a very broad message, it's not going to appeal to them. So there's a lot of places that advertising can break down. It can be, you know, the targeting that you're doing, the audience that you're reaching. It can be the message, what you're saying to them. It can be the visual. It can be the match of the message in the ad to the landing page. But you know, exactly what you said, you've got to narrow down, have very specific messages and visuals just for that group, and have very specific calls to action that you're going to be able to um, attract them, appeal to them, and then make sure you have a really strong follow-up, because you're never going to, it's extremely difficult today to just have an ad and someone might, makes a sale. So you've got to be able to capture them, retargeting, have a great follow-up plan, you can't just touch them once and expect them to become your customer. You want to find a way to get them onto that email list and continue that conversation. So I think, I think we're about out of time, but I'll, I'll make a response. So my company is Rock My Image. We work to build rock star professionals. And I'm going to take this into the music world. I like the music world. Rock on. So when acts are looking to build up, what do they do? They, they go on tour with bigger bands that already have a following. So being social, you will find people that are already connected with your audience. There are influencers that are already connected with your audience. There are brands, there are companies, there are organizations. Connect with them and find a way to work with them to communicate your message. Where there's synergy, you have an opportunity to build your brand in association, but also increase your visibility, credibility, leading to more profitability. To quickly summarize what he's saying, it's essentially you're going to find people who have your light customers, who are not necessarily competing with what you have to offer and add value and basically possibly share the database. So I think that's our time. Applause! Let's take, let's take, uh, let's take hold the line from the... We're going we're gonna to cheat a little bit. We'll take one more. All right. My name's Shane Saltinka. I the Flagson Center here in town and Tallahassee a couple places. But social media is huge for us. We get a great following on it. Um, calling to action is tough. Um, do, should we ever expect, and what is great call to action response on social? I mean, it, for me right now, it seems a lot of entertaining, and I get private messages and we go back and forth on that, but it doesn't ring the checkbook like a Yelp or putting my effort into, uh, Yelp is a social media stream, of course, but it just doesn't seem like it ever hits the checkbook. I would recommend putting together some sort of special offer, right? So find out what it is that people also buy and then find a way to package or bundle those things. Or again, partner with someone who you can uh, split some of your costs with as well. That would bring things down so you're combining different packages. Maybe someone who's close by uh, that has a, a complimentary service that you can um, package into a bundle. I like to use the 80 20 rule of like 80% of your content on social is like engaging, interacting, informative um, for your audience, and 20% is what I would call sort of promotional, but it has to be super soft. And what you want to do is get them to take one little micro step that will let you be able to continue to follow up with, with them in that same kind of a process, right? So if you can get them to visit your website and you have retargeting on there, you can continue to touch them. If you can get them to give um, their email or their contact information for some kind of a, 
you know, discount free offer, or sometimes a bonus works better, don't just do discounting your stuff, but offer them something extra if they take a particular action. But your goal is to be able to start that relationship, somehow capture their contact information so that you can continue to develop that relationship with them because that's what's gonna actually, you know, increase your revenue. Don't, don't ask the girl to get married. Flirt with her a little bit, then ask her out, then go on some dates, then potentially propose. So. <laughs> Basically get their number, build your list, and just continue to touch them over time. Thank you. So thank you to everyone who, who came out and supported. Thank you to Jaxco and OneSpark for having us out. Thank you to our presenters, Remo and Sarah, for doing a great job. Really appreciate it. Shout outs to Manny Torres and Mark Vickers for their assistance and, and Steve in the back for helping moderate. Enjoy the rest of the breakout sessions.